Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio episode 253. And today we're going unscripted. This is Jeremy. I'm the founder of Whistlekick. I am your host on this show. And I'm recording this the day after Christmas 2017. Of course, you might be listening to it in the future. Well, you're certainly listening to it in the future because we don't do these live. Well, we did for episode 200. But normally we don't do them live. So you are listening to this in the future. And I thank you for doing so. Thanks for sharing some of your time with me, with my voice. And whether you realize it or not, the rest of the martial arts radio community, the thousands, tens of thousands of people who listen to this show two times every week. Being that this is going to come out just a couple days after Christmas, just a couple days before New Year's, it's a pretty appropriate time to talk about New Year's resolutions. I'm not going to get bogged down with fitness stuff with you or why you should love the year that you've just had or be open to the year that you're going to have. I'm going to offer you some thoughts on how to approach 2018 to make your martial arts better without getting all swamped in the multitude of options. If you want to check out the rest of the shows we have, you can find them at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to check out our products, they are at whistlekick.com. And we've seen a ton of interest in the wholesale program lately. I don't know what we're doing right, but all of a sudden we're getting blasted with requests for wholesale accounts. For those of you that might be unaware of that program, no minimum orders, always free shipping. And you can find that at wholesale.whistlekick.com or there's a link in the navigation at whistlekick.com. So check that out. New Year's resolutions, they all come down to one thing, trying to improve something, right? We're trying to make some part of our lives better. Here we're going to talk about martial arts, how to make your martial arts better for 2018. The first thing, pick a single goal. Don't set out with dozens of goals and, you know, this month I'm going to work on this and this month I'm going to work on that. Pick a single goal, make sure it has a definable outcome and hammer on it until you've got it. Maybe it's achieving a new rank, or maybe it's learning a new weapon or form, or going to your first competition, or winning a particular trophy, you know, placing first at a competition. It doesn't matter. I'm not here to judge whether your particular New Year's resolutions are good or bad. That's not me. That's not for me. That's not my job. My job is to encourage you to help you reach whatever those goals are. And the number one thing that deprives people of success is going after too many things at once. Here's how I look at it. If you set out a list of three, four, ten things that you're looking to accomplish in 2018, it becomes really hard to work on any one of them and focus and make it happen. So go ahead, pick the one that is most important or the one that you feel is the easiest or whatever method you want to use for choosing one. Choose it. Make that the only one that you're going to work on. And then once you've done it, then go to something else. Maybe you've got a list written out. That's fine. But don't tell yourself that you're working on a dozen goals at once. It's silly. Take it from someone who spent 15, 20 years trying to hammer on multiple goals all the time. One of the greatest learning experiences I had was the realization that when I choose one thing to work on, it gets done. It gets done well. It gets done fast. It's almost magic. Next up, I don't want you to be afraid of choosing a goal that maybe isn't sexy. We all want to pick these big, dramatic things, yet time after time in the martial arts, we realize that It is our fundamentals, our basics, that have the greatest impact on the rest of our martial arts. If you were to go back and choose a goal related to improving your flexibility so you can refine your stances, or become stronger so your punches or blocks are more effective, that is going to translate out into everything that you do, whereas learning a jump, spin, whatever kick, and don't get me wrong, I love doing that stuff, that's not going to have carryover 
into your more fundamental movements. Learning a jumping 540 sidekick, hook kick, roundhouse kick doesn't make your rising block better. But working on your stances, making them stronger, makes both of those better. I may have glossed over it, so I want to go back. The most important thing about a goal is that it's something that you can decide when you've achieved it. The more subjective any goal is, the less likely you are to accomplish it. If you say, I want to get better at karate this year. Well, if you're going to class, you're probably going to do that. But how do you know if you haven't? If you say, I'm going to go to at least eight training sessions a month. Well, that's definable. You know whether or not you've accomplished that. And that's really important with goals. The more objective they are, the more likely you are to achieve them. If the goal that you really want to accomplish is big, don't be afraid to break it into smaller pieces. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Most of us have heard that tongue-in-cheek sort of cliche, but it holds true. If your goal is to earn a black belt or to you know, fight in a full contact match or, or something big, something daunting, you got to break it out. You got to look at it as individual pieces. Otherwise, you become overwhelmed. And once you're overwhelmed, that's the easiest state to be in to run away from a goal. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to accomplish whatever it is you want to accomplish. And of course, this advice holds true to pretty much everything outside of martial arts, any goals that you have, whether they're New Year's resolutions or not. And if we connect the idea of the New Year's resolution with some of the advice that I've offered in this show before, your New Year's resolution should probably be related to the things that you are the weakest at, the worst at. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with admitting where you are fallible, where you're falling down as it relates to your martial arts training. I'll tell you a secret. I don't train as often as I wish I did. And that's despite having a training space, a heated training space. Uh, let's see, 100 feet from where I'm standing. I have to go outside to get to it. But it's right there. It's in the whistle cake warehouse. But I'm busy. And I know I'm busy. And you're busy. And we're all busy. Which is why I'm going to leave you with this thought. For the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, I've had a single resolution as it relates to my life. And it doesn't sound like it's terribly objective. But for someone like me who is constantly analyzing things, this is what I need to keep myself moving forward. My New Year's resolution is, and always has been, to have a better year than the year before. And guess what? That's held true every year since I set it out because of the way I choose to look at my life. I would love to hear what your New Year's resolutions are. Feel free to reach out, jeremy at whistlecake.com, or you know what I'd love even more? Post them publicly. Let's share these things. We are an amazing community. I hear from so many of you individually, and I would love to see those conversations happen in public so you can lend support to each other, encourage each other. There are so many wonderful martial artists listening to this show, and I appreciate every one of you. Thank you for giving this show purpose, for giving me an outlet to talk about the martial arts topics that mean so much to me. Here's to an amazing 2018 we have great guests in store. Some of them have already been recorded. You'll get to listen to their episodes soon. That's all for now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.